My name's Irene Vincent, and I'm going to give you a tour of my studio, and I hope you enjoy the show. I'm mainly going to be behind the camera, so I just wanted to say hi, and if you like it, please click a like and subscribe, and if you're ever in Sedona, please come visit my home gallery. Thank you so much for watching. For reference books, and then over here, I have some unfinished paintings. That's mainly what I keep in this room. That's my ex-husband, Nandu, performing a fire ceremony. Then I have my paints. For a while now, I've been working on a cave series. So these are pieces I'm working on in different techniques. Somehow I got a jungle scene going. And this one I started a long time ago. That I've been working on the cave series for a while now. Caves are places where people go for solitude, praying. And I love traveling and going to caves. I love meditating and praying in caves. Caves are a sacred place. So the first gallery room out of the studio is my bedroom where I keep a lot of my little favorite. These three pieces were done in old master technique. Earth Guardian, Moonlight, Sorceress, Celebration of Venus Rising. These three are nighttime scenes and they all have full moon. It's a special time of potency and celebration. I'll show you a little bit of my altar. Native Indian kachinas. I just love the symbology and spiritual aspect of those. And on this wall is all my little uh, originals. And one of my common themes has been white animals. As you can see the white Holy Spirit bird the white angel cat and the horse and the holy spirit bird and healing garden that's another old master technique the holy spirit bird casper's oak tree guardians of the temple jeweled garden Blue Goddess Rising. She's a relatively new piece. In this cave one, I started a long time ago and just finished. And Shaman Girl. This piece on the wall is four by five feet. Oops, let me. And then these are originals. So all these originals are available. Okay, so this is a a beautiful oil piece I did back in in the early 70s. It's called Space Garden. It's uh, a parallel universe, kind of being in outer space and underwater at the same time. At that period in my life, I, I loved um, snorkeling and seeing all the beauty of the ocean. And then these are G-clay prints. And these prints, I did a layer of varnish and then I paint it maybe up to five hours on top of most of these, sometimes longer. They really look like the original oils. This one is an original. Bird and snake singing to the stars. I use sand in it and when the light hits it a certain way. Um, it, and sand is quartz, it's crystals. And it, it just has a magic to it and a, a special glow. It's uh, started out in acrylics, doing a pile of acrylics and setting it on fire. And then I saw the phoenix bird, which is so appropriate. So I brought out the image of the phoenix bird. At that my period of my life, most of my images were about the marriage of heaven and earth. The red color representing earth and the blue representing the sky and the heavens. Another form of yin and yang, heaven and earth. That's a jeweled garden. And I had a vision for that after having painted in Monet's gardens and then I went to be with a visionary group and 
Cadaque, Spain. The first night I got there, I dreamt it, and then I used a few colors, and i like, oh my God, that's the magical garden of my dream. So, of course, the paintings start out fast and take quite a while to develop. That's the cat's dream comes true. That was a very healing piece for me. This is from my expressionistic period in the late 70s. And this is a monotype. I did a series of monotypes. I'll show you a few more later. This is my guest room, Airbnb room. Um, again, G. Clay Prince. Now we're walking into my main family room. This is Divine Ecstasy. It's a five foot nine inch painting on a nine foot circle. And then I have cards and I've written two books. Revealing the Evolution of an Artist's Soul and Awakening Love's Vibrations. And poster prints. Then this was a, a study, Oneness and Thought, for a 12-foot equilateral triangle that unfortunately is in my garage because I don't have a wall tall enough for it. That's the original G. Clay's. And then this is the original that I recently finished. That's uh, Animal Spirits Rising. I care so much. I, I love the earth. I love the animals. I love humans. And we're to be the caretakers of the earth and uh, the animals. And sometimes we forget that's part of our purpose. Mermaid. And then uh, this is Guardians of the white deer. And I noticed that these three have this orange atmosphere in common. Just orange is a yogic color of the sannyasis and the monks. I have this really monk tendency in me. This one was recently finished along with this one. And sometimes we judge our pieces. I thought, oh, this piece is too sweet. I don't even want to finish it. I'll tell you, I had a a few gloomy days and I looked over at this piece and it was so soothing and it made me so happy and I realized how powerful it was. This is one of my sculptures. Catman pushing back the illusions of darkness and this won an award. Now you might wonder why I have all these pieces. The artists in Europe go, oh Irene, you're so lucky. You have your whole collection of art. And I'm thinking, I would have loved to have sold it, but I've always had to earn a living and my passion has been my art. But I've always wanted to paint what has come through my soul, my being. And people do tell me they often feel initiated in front of my paintings and they feel, uh, you know, their brain becomes more contemplative and in a sense of peace and that my paintings are here to help raise consciousness and that that's part of what I would like to do. And this one over here is planetary alignment for dream time. Came from a dream where a shaman healed me. At that time, I had just gotten back from Guatemala and I had a deadly flu and I was ready to give up and a shaman came in my dream and said, Irene, do you think I would let you die? And he reached out his hand over to me. In the I, I started the painting and then I put it in the closet. I, I, I woke up healed the next day from that dream. So this painting was probably in the closet for I don't know how many years and then as I became more conscious I had a dream where I was healing a person and I met that person in real life the next day and then I finished the painting the shaman man he was an elderly 
Weicho from the Weicho tribe. And in my dream, it was a young man that I healed. He he was having heartbreak, and I spoke with him, and it was pretty amazing meeting him the next day. I, I kept meeting characters that were showing up in my dreams. That was for like a one or two year period. I was really connecting to dream time. It, in reality, this one's called Journey of the Soul. This was a transition piece from my political art to my spiritual art. And this one started bringing all the yogis into my life. It's about being, dropping away the old patterns, old habits, and being on the spiritual path. It was making a commitment. It's very textural, very beautiful in person. Those were my footprints. I, I started this painting on the floor. I, I just love the sensuality of the paint. I, those are my real footprints. I had to hold on to stools because I was sliding all over the place. Really fun. This has always been a favorite charcoal drawing. It's pretty large. It's uh, called Introversion, where uh, the girl is really sad, but then she sees the light coming through her hair. So the outside of that represents her seeing the light through the strands of her hair. And that's the way out of depression is to get involved in life, appreciate something about life, life, especially the light. You know, you ever get sad? Look at the beauty of a rose and the smell of the rose. If you get into beauty and appreciate beauty, it connects you to the universe. This is uh, a beautiful gicle of Casper's tree. Okay, this is um, a monotype, shaman stream dance, cosmic dance. I've always loved slow motion dancing. This is, sometimes this piece scares people. This is one of my expressionistic pieces. But for me, it was very shamanistic. That's like a bear coming out of the darkness. But to me, White Bear was, is a healer. Sorry for the reflections. And then that's uh, some enchanted meeting. A little pun there from some enchanted evening. And that's uh, Echoes of Devotion. And this is my little library room where I have this large painting of the realm where beings bless each other just because they exist. I know we've always said bless you, but there was a period of my time where all these yogis and wondrous beings were blessing me and then, you know, I forgot that it's our own innate right to bless everyone and how empowering it is to invoke the divine light and have the light go through us and our bodies are like this beautiful flute and the light travels through us and we can bless and heal each other. So this was where I was realizing that we're all part of the divine spirit and we are the divine spirit. And those are um, she clays, and then the eagle up there is the original, and that, that's been done with that sand technique. I had these cards made on Fine Art America. I purchased them to see their quality, and I'm really happy with their quality. And then I purchased a little cup. I wanted to see how that came out because I had friends buying cups, and I wanted to make sure that they were beautiful and I was truly amazed. I got a little phone case and it's super quality. And I bought this pillow. So I'll put the link to Fine Art America. This painting, Divine Ecstasy, is quite a story behind it. The process of making it, having the image come through. I'll do a separate YouTube on that one. Thank you everyone so much for watching. If you're ever in Sedona, please give me a call and you're welcome to come visit my studio and speak with me. That would be awesome. Bye.